In this video, I'm going to go over the basic installation and activation of the MetaDomainer plugin. So in order to use MetaDomainer, you of course need WordPress. So what we do is we recommend that you have a default master WordPress install. So essentially you would use one of your domain names to manage all your other domain names. It doesn't have to be your primary domain name. We recommend you register a domain just for your domain business. So for example, I registered mydomainstack.com to do my business with. So in this example, I've, I've purchased the plugin and now I'm going to install and activate it. So I would go to plugins and add new. And then I would click on upload. Now I'm going to assume that I have downloaded the plugin from the MetaDomainer members area. So once I do that, I go choose file. I'm going to go to the file location where it's located. It is the MetaDomainer zip. So I download that plugin there. I'm going to double click it. And then it's there. I will click on install now. And then I will activate it. And once you do that, you're going to see MetaDomainer appear on the right hand side. Now if I go to the settings page to start, you'll see some basic settings here. But if I go to add a new domain, you're going to need to activate the plugin. So you're going to see that your MetaDomainer license is invalid, local key expires, it says the date. So you just want to enter your key and then the username and email for your MetaDomainer account. So I'm going to just paste in the, the key here. I'll end up blurring these out in front of the video. And then my username, and then my email. And then once I have that information, I will click on validate. And that license is now good for one year. So it expires at the end of one year, in which case you'll have to renew your MetaDomainer license. Uh, just to mention, just to be clear, if you do not renew your license, all your pages will still work, but you won't be able to add any new pages or edit the existing pages. You just have to renew your license to do that. Okay, so once I do that, you're going to see that this is the add domain panel that you'll see in our next video. Now I'm just going to go to settings. And on the settings, you're going to see these are the master controls that control all of the templates. So you can change these on an individual basis, but for here, this is where you would control them on a master level so you don't have to re-enter the same information all, this, at all the time. So this would be your copyright notice. So we don't have a year function right now. We just type in the year in your company name. I'm sure we'll be adding a default variable for that in the near future. This is the affiliate disclaimer. This is a very basic affiliate disclaimer and disclosure statement. So you do want to have these if you're doing affiliate marketing or selling anything on your site. You want to add this basic affiliate disclaimer. We then have a contact URL field. You can enter in a contact URL and a privacy and terms link. This is the full URL you want to add. And we do have these little tooltips. So if you put your cursor over the tooltips, you'll see what exactly what we're looking for in this, this location. Now, because you might have hundreds of domains on here, you don't want to have hundreds of contact forms. So what we do is we recommend you set up one master contact link. It could be just a page that has your email address. It could be a contact form. It could go to some other way to contact you, but it just has to be a full URL. Same with the privacy and terms link. There are resources for privacy and terms pages. We recommend that you just make one on your master install and add the URL here. This is the language section. So you most likely, if you want to have it be English, you want to have it be EN, but if you know what language codes are for HTML, you can change that function here. Metadomain or username, you can leave this blank for now. This is something that we may add in the future, a referral program. Uh, essentially, it would be, I think you're, uh, there's a, actually a numerical value, but we may change that in the future. Same with ClickBank ID, we'll be adding ClickBank templates in the future, so you can add your ClickBank ID here, and that'll come in handy in the future. We have different buttons on some sales pages, uh, contact us or make an offer, so you can change that button text here if you want. You can also change the primary link text and the secondary link text. You will understand this once you start looking at the templates. These are the things that you can kind of change. The next thing we have is the Amazon Native Ads section. This is very important that if you're going to use our Amazon ad template, you want to get your own tracking ID. So we do have information and tooltips in our documentation that will take you to the proper page. Uh, but essentially, you would go into your Amazon Associates account and you want to get a tracking ID that's unique to you. Don't Please don't use ours for your Amazon ad pages. Make sure you change that. Link ID is also a tracking ID. So you get that from creating your first code. And once again, we do have documentation on doing that as well. The search phrase for now, I just did a golf, which was one of our first template demo templates, but you can change this to any keyword. So if you deal mostly in the health niche, you can use a health related keyword. You want to make sure that the ads will actually come up for that keyword. But whatever your primary uh, domain inventory is, whatever the keyword is, whatever, whatever 
whatever keyword phrase you think you're going to use the most, just change that here. This information you do not need to change. These are kind of the default native ad settings. So if you're an advanced user who's familiar with Amazon native ads, you can go in here and change this information uh, to your, to your uh, liking. Uh, you can also change this text that appears on the page and the region and so forth and the category as well. But for the most part, you don't want to change these. You're primarily concerned with these top three, right? So I wouldn't worry about those. Focus on these three until you become more advanced. For custom functions, we have an ad code for network ad. This lets you put a ad on all of your templates automatically. So let's just say, for example, you are a web host. Uh, you're, I'm sorry, you're an affiliate for a web host. You could put an affiliate web host banner here and it would appear on all of your templates. Except, I shouldn't say, it doesn't appear on the small business template or the, the link redirect, of course. <clears throat> but you can put a link in here, an AdSense ad. It might not work in all cases, but if you have a generic ad that you want to run across your entire site network, you can just dump that HTML code here. This is header code, so if you'd like to use tracking pixels or Google code, whatever you want to put in the header, you would put here. Custom CSS, if you have a certain styling that you like, you can use custom CSS and it will change all of the templates using this master function. Same with the footer code, if you want to put a tracking pixel, if you want to put in uh, JavaScript files and links like that, you can do that. So it's basically for advanced use. But you need to do all that first uh, and just fill this out before you go in and create a domain. So that, that's the end of this first video, just set up installation, activation, and then you're ready to start adding your domain template pages. Okay, thank you.